Okay, there we sit for a day or two till it hardens up. I did notice in there there's just a tiny lighter amount of red. But I've manhandled this enough. I did not take these screws out, I just tightened them up. They don't look gobby. I thought what would happen in these hole in these grooves was that the paint would gob in. So I backed each screw off a quarter of a turn, painted it, and then I tightened them up a quarter of a turn. So we'll still see. I will pressure test the tank. So I'm sorry again, I'll say it again. Uh, I was worried there could be paint under the screws now. But anyway, I, uh, I will pressure test that tank. I did paint the two. I have a choice now between these two knobs. One came from the old saw one. They're both broken. This one has a crack in it. If you stand up close. And this one has a little crunchy bunny right there. Eh? But they both look okay from the top. So I'm not going to do anything more with those and the gas cap looks fine. It's a gas cap! So now I'm just going to wait for this to harden up. Looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Yes, when you really look, there's imperfections. But I've never been an auto body guy. My buddy Steve OJ, go to his channel. He's got a new series called Cool Cars. Yes, the furnace is on. You're going to hear more of it in the next little while. So right now I want to do a pressure test on this chainsaw. I've got the uh, this is the flat uh, this is the chain drive side, same side as the chain. I've got that on with the five bolts and a and a uh, gasket behind it. Got that on. Um, that's about all I think. Oh, this. Oil tank is on and pressure tested. Just with my mouth on there. Now we're going to see if we got leaks. There. Whew. Oh, I hate that thing. So let's just get our. Uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get some soap and water right away. Squirt on both sides of that. Get that started onto there. Is that going to work? Yep. So I'm blocking off the muffler with a rubber with a rubber pad. I did this when I first when I first got the saw running, and I wanted to know what I had. And uh, the saw itself has 150 pounds per square inch uh, compression, which is pretty darn cool. Why won't you? Why won't you go into a hole? There we go. Okay, let's get a small ratchet. You just tighten that up. I still haven't decided. Oh, look at this. We're going to change the subject. This is what they call a reed. Has anybody heard of the reed of two stroke engines with a reed? Well, this, there's, there's four little flappers in here. See that? And they have to test back pressure, but if you blow through them, like that, and then you suck in. You should get a seal, and you do. But hmm, I'm wondering if I should mount that reed on there like that. No, it has to be elevated. I'm not going to do that. I've heard it. So now we're going to put the uh, car. Carburetor on with a seal. So that should seal the inlet port and the outlet port at the same time. Oh, 
I don't know if this is going to So we need shorter bolts. That looks like quarter inch. Let me find some quarter inch bolts. I'll be right back. All right, I found a couple of bolts that aren't too long. The original bolts that came with the carburetor are too long. So now I've got the block. I've got the carburetor intake blocked off, and the intake manifold is the actual crankcase, right? Um, we've got the, uh, the new crank seals in. We're going to put the spark plug back in so that we can, don't have any leakages through the uh, spark plug hole. It's all very interesting stuff, right? Now we're going to spray some soap on here, spray some soap there, and there, outside there, and over here, and we're going to pump this up and see if we can get any reading at all. Where are we leaking? I don't know where. I'll be damned. Hmm. Still leaking out of the carburetor. Not possible. Holding at five pounds, guys. That's a big area. I'm impressed. It's holding at five pounds. So what I did was I cut a new, if we can just lift you up a little bit. I cut a new one of these rubber pads and stuck it under the carburetor and just bolted the carburetor down. So there we are. Isn't that cool? No leakies at all at five pounds. Five and a half pounds and it's holding there. I'm kind of stoked you guys. I get excited over these small things. Now which one do we unplug so you can hear it? Right here. That's quite a bit of air in there. I'm happy. Yeah! And I can assure you that the that the the air pressure in here is changing all the time. That's what two strokes do. The piston goes up, it compresses the cylinder, and at the same time produces a vacuum in the... Uh... Come on, baby. Yay, all right. So anyway, when the piston, when the piston goes this way, uh, to, towards top dead center, creates pressure inside the uh, cylinder, but it also provides a vacuum in the in the crankcase and then when the piston goes down it provides pressure for the vaporized gas to get up into the top of the piston uh, in cylinder excuse me so yeah good 
Now let's clean up this schmoo. I sprayed a lot of water on this thing. Now we're going to take off the carburetor. Good thing. This is old thrown away static mat from my old job. Thanks guys.